black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Alright y'all, just another what I'm craving today, and that would be a panko crusted fried chicken sandwich with bacon, honey mustard, all of these little veggie fixins, this nice Portuguese bun toasted, and then I got these here, these Cavendish all day hash brown fries, but I really wanted like a tater tot or something different, so I saw these and I thought they'd be good. They seem like they have some good big substance to them, can't go wrong with a hash brown, but I just want a nice homemade fried chicken sandwich with some tots and I actually got this burger sauce for dipping these hash browns and I want to see how that goes kind of like a maybe like a mac sauce or something like that so let's get into it all right first things first I just want to pound out this breast a little thinner and make it even a little saran wrap a little parchment whatever you got a little hammer of Thor action and just get to pounding on the breast it's just, just a light pound take it easy Treat the breast with kindness. Pounded breast into a bowl. Light little buttermilk coat. A Little bit of air fryer bacon. Line the bottom with some parchment. Maybe going with about four strips for this bad boy, I'm thinking. All right, panko plate coming in hot. We just need our little breading station. Just uh, about maybe that much should work. A little bit of perfect onion prep via the mandolin, a man's best friend for prepping things uniformly, but also a man's worst nightmare if you use it recklessly because the mandolin can be kind of scary sometimes. But you get the perfect onions every single time. So it is worth it to master. Unfortunately, they don't make a mandolin for tomatoes, so we need to do that with our actual knife skills. But you guys know I love a perfect slice of tomato. So we'll do maybe two of those for this sandwich. We might only need one, but always get two for good measure. And I know this is strange, but per sandwich, per everything, my lettuce preference changes. So today we're just going with the nice in and out style. Just the two nice pieces of fully intact iceberg. You just gotta do it like that instead. No shredded today, no shredded. Y'all know we can't have a soft bun. We need a toasty bun. So we will oil this guy. We know we do our squirt and then our brush for even coat before we go to the pan for this. And of course, we got to get our dipping sauce prepped in our little ramekin because we do it pro around here. And I really hope this tastes good on these hash browns. I think it will, but uh, we'll have to see. We'll find out shortly. Okay, coming in hot. Bacon is looking well proper. Very perfectly crispy cooked. A little flop, a little crisp, just how we like it. Time to crust up this breast assist. Pull her out of the buttermilk into here, flat. Basically just leave that side as is. Spoon over this stuff. That's not working very well, so I'm just gonna hit the container over it. A little pat in. Get some of these edges. And then we head over to the fryer. Okay, oil's at 325, we're going in six to eight minutes. Okay, set this nice crispy bad boy down while it's nice and hot and get a little salt on there. Perfect. Got our hash breezies looking to take a dunk. Look at these guys, they're gonna be so good. I can't wait. All right, hashies piping hot, looking perfect. Just get them into a little a little grease catcher here, and we're gonna give them a quick salt while they're hot, but these are looking pretty amazing. I'm very excited, like I said, to eat these. Touch of salt. Lightly toasted bun here, and now it's time to build the sucker. All right, so my method of attack here is as follows. I think I'm gonna go some honey mustard on the bottom. Brush around, even spread. Not a lot, just some. Then I'm coming in with the chicken piece, perfect fit. Then I'm going 
honey mustard again drizzled all over pretty heavy because you guys know I'm a saucy guy next we have our absolutely perfect bacon coming in for this landing right here one strip two strip three strip four that's what's up all right top bun is getting lettuce nice crunchy cold lettuce two tomatoes and lastly our rings of raw red onion look at that and then we gotta marry these two in holy matrimony right here right now like this quick flip and that's what I'm talking about honey mustard bacon crispy fried chicken sandwich that's it honey mustard crispy chicken bacon sandwich isn't it beautiful isn't it lovely don't you want to shove it in your mouth I'm about to I can't wait I'm gonna plate up the rest of this and you're gonna meet me in the eating station Alright, welcome to another installment of Just What I Was Craving today, and this is Just What I Was Craving. I was craving hash browns and a restaurant style, crispy honey mustard chicken sandwich done up right with the bacon and then some dips. I got mayo, I got the burger sauce, I got an ice cold DP, I got an appetite, and I'm ready to eat, super ready to eat. So before we do anything more, we must pour, maybe we'll move this back just a moment with our knife here. I, I want to try and conquer it in like just with one, you know, just biting it like a regular burger. But I don't know, we may have to half it, but I don't know. Anyways, cheers to you for being here, for continuing to show up for the POA. I really appreciate it. Appreciate ya. And uh, I already know there's going to be people out there in the comments being like, bruh, all that sandwich needed was some cheese. And I'm going to say this. I don't, I don't like mixing. It's just like the Whopper in a sense. I don't like mixing my cheese with my chicken. Call me crazy. I don't know why, but I just don't like cheese on chicken sandwiches. I would much rather let... The vegetables and bacon and the sauces sing by themselves relative to the chicken uh, breast. For some reason, I just don't I don't like cheese on fried chicken sandwiches. Cheers. I know lots of people do get cheese though. Oh man. Oh, that's an ice cold, beautiful diet DP. Okay. First things first, knife out. And uh, I get, you know what? These are just seeming so risky to me. I'm just gonna have to take them down a little bit, okay? So Leaning Tower of Hash Brown is no longer. But here you go. Try to give you a whole view of this sucker, this bad boy. Thing is legit, like it's huge, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do a, like a squish on this. Right there. That's the first bite of that corner. All right. happiness that is mm, pure and total happiness in a bun
It's exactly what I was craving. Oh man. At first, I thought I might have screwed up with my lax panko uh, breading style. Usually, if I was feeling more uh, up to it, I would have made like a little bit of a wet batter too to kind of dunk that in first as like a shield, like a shell, and then do the panko, but it worked out. Oh, dude, you don't even know. <laughs> like just all of those, oh man. Just all the elements are working. Crispy, crunchy, salty, sweet. That little bit of bite from the red onion, very crucial in this game. Hear these? Soul crunch. All right, so that's burr sauce. Kind of, kind of max sausage. Definitely some grainy mustard in there. Definitely horseradish. It's quite, uh, quite intense, like quite tangy, horseradishy, whatever that bite. Just brought some regular mayo too. Whatever that, that bite is in there, it's more on that side. Am I crazy about it? Not overly. I probably wouldn't buy it, wouldn't buy it again. I feel like I can probably whip up something similar and better just from scratch. That being said, I'm definitely always open to trying a new sauce because I just, I, my, I have a whole, my, one of my whole, my, like my entire fridge is just condiments. <laughs> this bacon though, so perfect. I'm trying to see if I have any color on my face yet. Like it seems like I tanned up a little bit. I've been hit, hitting the pool, I hit the pool today. right when it opened at one. Which is the most peaceful time to go. Because there's limited people, because, you know, parents still have work and stuff, and a lot of kids can't go until later. In the day, but there's this one group of like 13 year olds that are diehard. I 
they're there every time I go and they have this one kid in their group who's their same age, but I think he got hit with like, like giganticism disease or something like that. But he's like six, five, 300 pounds. And all those, his friends that he hangs out with are like just prepubescent toothpick pipsqueak kids, but they're the same age. And it's just like, I think this kid might be on the spectrum a little bit too. He's like really loud and always talking. But if he wanted to, he could just pick one of his friends up just by the neck and like lift them up and just drop them <laughs> into the pool. He's massive. Like I stood beside him and I was like, dude, you are big. It's funny though, watching uh, like the boys were there first. Uh, they, they like bring a puck to dive for. And then the girls showed up, like they're same age. And it's so funny to watch like just their demeanor and their behavior start to change. And then the whole like being like grade eight and like, like flirting and having crushes. You, you could totally tell it's happening. Just makes me remember back to my days like flirting in the summer trying to like you like play fight with her with the, your girl like the girls really so you can just get closer to them so you can hopefully kiss them later on at spin the bottle I doubt that's still a thing, but I think kids these days are probably so far advanced relative to that. Like, I doubt there's any spin the bottle. Just nostalgic though, thinking about the good old days, the throwback days. when you hadn't really done much of anything yet and you're all, ner you're all nervous. You like don't know even like how to talk to girls. <laughs> and everybody like whispers through each other like Sarah said, Tommy said that Joel <laughs> likes Megan. That type of shit. <laughs> I remember in grade seven and eight once, I actually weaseled my way into, these girls had like this public but just for the girls, just for a certain group of girls, this like public diary, sort of like a burn book, but also kind of like the secrets of like the crushes and stuff. And they would like write in a paragraph and like pass it to another girl. And then the girl would put in like her two cents. I somehow convinced these girls to let me into that book. And then I got to know all the grade seven, eight crushes. So of course I reported it back to the boys. <laughs> Behind enemy lines. 
But you got to report it back to the, to the boys. You got to let, like, Greg know where he stands with Michelle, you know? And those are real names. And Michelle was a floozy for that age. For that age. She was getting into it pretty heavy. All right, that's enough of that for me. Sufficiently full off that. Just the sandwich was amazing. These are good too, but like I said, I'm not trying to go overboard these days. Just want to enjoy the delicious thing that I made. And that's it. And reminisce and reflect on my youth. Okay. Till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well. Stay true.